it's been a while with the NBA. I mean, the Artest Melee is obviously the peak. That's the granddaddy. That's the 10 out of 10 of just right. rewatching the same thing over and over again, noticing new things each time. Yes. I watched the multiple angles, thank God for Twitter, <laughs> of, of the Jimmy Butler thing blowing up. And I, each time I would become fascinated by something else. Yeah. It, it, one time I was watching just Karam Butler, who's just not moving for 40 seconds, who's just so unimpressed by any sort of it, animosity. It's amazing how just undisturbed he sort of is at that point. He's om- It's almost like he's like looking at that he saw like, who, did some, like someone knocked on his door and he came outside to look and it's like, oh, there's no one there. <laughs> Well, he's he like, he's like in line at the, at the jack of the box, waiting, waiting for his order, <laughs> just as the whole team is combusting around him. Then you had Duncan Robinson, who I felt like looked like the almost famous drummer during the plane crash scene, where he's like, oh man, can't we just get, can we just get some food and I'll get along? And just has this kind of panicked look on his face. He wants no part of it. Spo's faces. Oh my I, God. Spo, Spo. Who knew? Who knew he had it in him? Spo, like he was doing the thing, especially once he got up, like there, at first, you know, you could tell he's like, he couldn't even believe it was happening to him. Yeah. He had the, like, are you fucking kidding me? Look, at it was face. like a, it was like, a, is, are, so is this actually what's about to happen is what's happening? The thing that is this going to continue to happen to me? What's happening right now? Is this going to, is this actually happening? I'm going to fight my player. He had that yeah. vibe to him. And then once he got up, he, because he got up to go to go, you know, to talk to him some more after it, and that's when he came with the unbelievable, unbelievably graceful, very accurate, perfect touch on with the clipboard going down. Really nice, made a oh, sound even on the on the audio. Made and a sound. didn't have to, and didn't have to get aggressive with it. Really, like there was obviously aggression behind it, but he could have he could have been reckless with it and broke the clipboard. And that clipboard's fine today. That clipboard, you can use that again today. <laughs> yeah, they, it's no probable problem. for tonight's game. Absolutely, the scatters, the, the the papers scattered in multiple directions, which is I think what you want in that scenario. If you're Spo, you want you know a, a little bit of an explosion there. But you we don't had, have, you know, we had the PJ Tucker, the, the yeah. kind of triple take <laughs> look yeah. away, like, oh my God, is this is my my teammate and coach about to have a fight in the huddle? It took me a little bit to see it on, I, and I forget what you, but it might be the, it, I I think it's the behind the bench angle. It was like the first angle that came out, yeah. not the Warriors broadcast yeah. angle, but the behind the one with the laughing emojis or yeah. whatever. It, you can see at a certain point when. Uh, Haslam is like fully, fully in it, you know? Yeah. You can see, I think it's Caleb Martin is the Martin brother that's on the heat. You can see him. He does like the get back coach in college football <laughs> move where he right. grabs him by the waist. And you can tell he's like, I, he feels he has to do it. He can't not do it like because of what's about to happen, but he does not want to be grabbing Haslam's. No. <laughs> he does not, you know? Yeah. And I think Haslam, is can go from zero to 10. It seems like faster than maybe anybody. And he, I, this is one of the reasons you have has him on the bench. There was a clear violation. The player crossed some sort of line and has him immediately. I love the pointing to the, the pointing to the runway is one of my yeah. favorites too. That's it's great. Like, I don't feel like if you and I are in an altercation, we're not pointing to right. let's go underneath where we could just settle this. And only one of us is going to come out of the runway. No, Haslam just went there immediately. It's we'll a go great, over there. It's great nonverbal shorthand. You know, you just, it's just, you, we just, we all, you know what it means. And it's good for NBA fights because a lot of times they're, they're getting pulled away from each other or whatever. And so you don't have to be able to speak loud enough to where the guy can hear you. You just body language it. Right. He body languaged it. And the other one who body languaged it was Spo. I'm trying to remember. So this is like a random altercation that also mean nothing other than the Heat fans are going to get super upset because everyone's been making Heat culture jokes for the last 18 hours. <laughs> the the Spo, the, everything about it was so impressive. It was pretty unbelievable. He, it's, he was already one of my favorite coaches. I got, when I was doing the finals for two years, we got, we would interview him before the games. He was just cool, you know, because yeah. the announcers get to go so we can do our whole thing where we go, well, when we talked to Spo after the game, oh, so we yeah, did that just, with yeah. him once or twice, um, but then hung out with him at the ESPYs one year. He's just like the greatest guy. He's like beloved at NBA circles. All the other coaches love him. Yeah. He went through a whole bunch of shit with those LeBron teams. 
where well, LeBron, yeah, he, LeBron last, was ready to fire him or get him fired well, yeah, after that, the yeah, second year. They bumped year. into him, right? Yeah, there was yeah. some stuff, but he handled it perfectly. And then this one, like, checked every box. Like, he, when he stands up, Butler yeah. stands up. And Spo stands up, and it's like he's kind of getting in between him and Haslam, but he's also kind of like, I'm fucking right here, dude. If you, you know, there, there was a physicality to it that I enjoyed. There's a, there's a, when he, when he does, the players have gone away from the bench and he has come back around and there he's thrown the, he's thrown the clipboard and he's still so fired up, but there's still that thing in his head. That's like, I'm in public and a lot of people are watching this. <laughs> right. I can't people have go, phones. I can't go ballistic. And so it looks like he's trying to like, you know, like, hold in like he's like he's constipated or something like he's yeah. so upset the, 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 the there's so much rage there but he doesn't want to step over into like he can't he doesn't want to go into Haslam territory right and yeah. then Butler who reined himself in it seemed like a little bit because yeah. if he had escalated at all it, we, it would have been a situation I was at the game when Durant and Draymond went each other and I actually have a cell phone video of it because I started taping it at one point were you right behind the bench I was behind the bench closer to the Clipper side, wow. but I was watching it because I saw them get mad at each other as they were walking up the court. So I kind of followed them and everybody else, it was about to go to overtime, but I was like, uh oh, like I, I could just see it. And then by all of a sudden people are standing and Boogie Cousins is involved. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, I'm filming it with my phone. Yeah. Uh, these things are great. Ultimately, we love to do the thing after the fact where people are like, it means nothing. This is what happens on the court. Yeah. I am a proponent of that 97% of the time, but that sometimes it does mean something. It I meant would, something that night with Durant and Draymond, like, and everybody was like, it's fine. It was like, it did not seem fine. It seemed like it had crossed the line. And I wonder with the heat, like, did this cross the line or not? I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it might, I mean, you know, like a Butler seems to be pretty, uh, you know, comfortable with conflict. Like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> just sort of moves forward, whatever. I, it, 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 I, I, I'm generally with you that usually it is just like heat of the moment. Like, okay, like it, we can, we're all yeah, professionals. We can move on from this. It's, it's, it's no big. It was funny to watch. My, my favorite things in those sort of situations are when they involve people or, you know, the, when, when the people that aren't involved get asked about it. And so Kyle Lowry has to go get asked about all of this right. last night. And he doesn't even want to look up while he's talking because why would he, this is a miserable experience for him to try to yeah. talk his, you know, sort of act like this is no big deal. And he said, he was like, it's nothing. To us, it's nothing. You know, we conversated about it and have a conversation and going forward and we continue to build. And you know, just one of those things like, well, it, it's not nothing. It's probably yeah. like it's, it's, it probably won't ultimately like, you know, they'll be how successful they're going to be, re you know, regardless whether that fight happens or not. Maybe who knows? But it's not nothing <laughs> like that's Well, I look at it like when you're at a basketball game, it's like being in a giant restaurant. And if I'm at a restaurant and three tables down, people start screaming at each other and stand up and somebody's pointing to meet them outside <laughs> and they throw the menu down. We'd all be in the restaurant like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Is there going to be a fight? Yeah. Well, and if, if you go home, if you like weren't with it, like if I wasn't with my wife and I went home and that had happened at the restaurant and she was like, Hey, how, what, how was dinner? Uh, what happened? Be the and first said, thing you would say. Yeah. And I said nothing. <laughs> that, wouldn't <laughs> right. be true. that wouldn't right. be true. That would not be my answer. So then the other outcome once people are digesting us on Twitter and trying to find out more, it, it was one, one of the rare fun Twitter days. I think Twitter is the seventh circle of hell, but <laughs> yeah. in this case, it was kind of fun. It was kind of trying to f find out if there were more video angles, all that stuff. And then, then there was this narrative after mostly driven by the Miami fans who were like, Oh, at least we finally got people talking about us. Yeah, they do that thing. It's like we've been talking about you the whole year. The, the Riggers written multiple stories. KOC's done videos about Tyler Hero. We've talked about Bam on this. I mean, we've talked about the Heat a bunch. We've everybody who knows anything about basketball is like, yeah, don't want to play those guys in a playoff series. Just wonder if they're going to be healthy. Yeah, so it seems like I, basketball people for a while were saying that they were the best team in the East. <laughs>